This video, I'm going to discuss NoSQL and the way it kind of arose out of the need to store big data. So, first of all, what is NoSQL? It stands for not only SQL. Uh, a lot of the NoSQL systems that exist actually support SQL uh, as a query language. However, the, uh, the real name of NoSQL should probably be non-relational because the database itself does not have relational database characteristics such as tables. So it does not use relational tables. It does not have the idea of foreign keys from one table to another. And instead, it is, uh, by its very nature, on a distributed system. In the last video, we talked about distributed systems and how um, uh, those are able to be scaled. And a distributed system is normally scaled horizontally, which means you add more and more servers to distribute the load equally. Um, NoSQL also is generally open source, which is kind of a good thing for those who are developing with it. So let's look at some general properties of NoSQL. First, the schemas are dynamic. This means that columns, for example, can be added at any time and some of the rows may not even contain some of the columns. And again, I'm using rows and columns here because that's what we're used to studying in a relational model where you have tables. But this is the idea of fields that can be added and removed without affecting the other records that are in the system. Second thing is data variety. Um, and this kind of relates to it being a dynamic schema because the data variety indicates that any type of data can be supported, whether it's structured, semi-structured, or just unstructured data, such as uh, logs, which are usually more on the structured side, but unstructured data like images and videos and graphs are also um, supported in a system like a NoSQL database. And because of that, it actually reduces the need for the um, extract transform load process because all of these items are, um, are part of a, a single record or a collection of records. So there's not as much need to move those things around like you would in a relational um, data warehouse, for example. Another thing is um, they are designed with high availability in mind, so they use clusters of systems uh, that allow for horizontal scalability. The distributed storage system is designed for commodity hardware, so these are things that you can buy pretty easily and set up a NoSQL database fairly quickly. Um, and then allow that to scale horizontally. And the other part of this is it enables cloud integration. And most of the systems that you will see with NoSQL are easily installed and ported and used with cloud um, technology. The other characteristic or property is that it's generally open source and it's free to develop and free to use in commercial products for the most part. And that is really helpful and important for developers. And no SQL, it being not only SQL, what we tend to find is that the no SQL systems that exist have their own APIs that are pretty rich for CRUD operations and those rich APIs are often the reason that people choose a certain NoSQL database over another one because they are more developer friendly than simple SQL. So there are several classes of NoSQL databases and we'll look at these uh, one by one. 
the first is column based which uses key value pairs but the key value pair is a list of the things in a particular column and I'll show you an example of that in just a moment a document based database is one that stores document oriented information which is uh, considered semi-structured data but the semi-structured documents may also have unstructured uh, characteristics key value pair databases are associative arrays so such as dictionaries uh, in in a python environment or hash maps in a c sharp environment this is what we're talking about here so key value storage graph based database uh, systems are designed around mathematical graphs with nodes and edges and then you have multi-model databases that are um, supportive of more than one back end so the one that I will be focusing on in this video series is the document based storage because document based storage MongoDB is the one that we are going to be looking at in depth but here's some uh, just some examples of how each of these other ones work column based data column based data is a system where your table contains column families and then those column families in turn contain columns the columns themselves contain a key that has a value uh, along with it so the the tables that we are used to seeing in a relational model are really row based but to store things in a column based way you would instead store a basically a column a, a comma separated list that contains the key and the value the key being the column name and the value being the actual value of the data for that particular position in a row so this kind of flips the idea of um, storage a little bit to the side from what you might be used to uh, studying with relational databases so instead of row based uh, this is storing based on columns the second one is the key value pair data model where a table contains key spaces which are like columns and then that contains identifiers that are uh, like rows so each identifier becomes a row in the database so the key spaces that allows you to uh, do things like indexing uh, pretty easily so two examples of that are Redis and DynamoDB with Amazon Web Services then you have graph databases where the tables themselves are graphs that contain nodes, labels, relations between the nodes, and the properties for those relations. Um, so you see the examples here. You have nodes that are related. So node A in this case might be related to node B. And then the properties of that node are listed as well as the properties of the relation. So this this becomes a way of representing mathematical databases or mathematical graphs in a database. GraphDB and OrientDB are two of the graph-based data uh, models that exist out there. Then finally, back to document-based databases, we have the idea where a collection exists within a database. The collections are close to what we would consider a table and then those tables are containers those collections are containers for documents and each document would represent a row uh, with what we're used to seeing mongodb is one of those examples and couch base is a second example of a document based data model So there are some potential problems with NoSQL databases. ACID transactions are not supported 
generally. So atomicity, uh, keeping transactions atomic, making sure that the transactions are consistent, making sure they are isolated and durable. They're not really supported in the same way that a uh, relational database would support these ACID properties. So you might run into some problems just with the understanding of how things work in a NoSQL database. A second potential problem is that each of these NoSQL databases, we saw several examples in the past few slides, but what tends to happen is each one has their own API and often those APIs lack SQL support. So um, that forces people into using vendor specified languages. Now that can be helpful when a, a particular group of developers is familiar with a, a technology such as JavaScript um, and perhaps JSON. So that might be okay. So you might choose your database platform based on the usability of the APIs that are given to you. But again, a lot of these lack SQL support. Some do include SQL support, but some do not. Another thing is there are often no join operations. Some allow you to do joins, but others do not. And one of the reasons that they would not allow you to do joins is the way that documents are set up in a, in a document database, for example. Um, document storage allows you to put things all together in one system. So it might not be, um, might not be as useful for you. The other thing is the cap theorem is still there. Um, you can only achieve consistency and availability or consistency and partition tolerance or availability and partition tolerance. All those things are still in play and again that's something that you need to be mindful of as you're using a NoSQL database.